Hey everybody, this is Bob from MedTechify, and today I wanted to show you a little bit about row owners and roles. Um, there's some great video out there by, put up by Jack Vaughn about this, um, some nice documentation about this as well. However, I was still a little confused until I started playing with it, so hopefully my explanation here will further enhance your knowledge on what roles and row owners are and how you can use them in your app. All right, so the best way to show you is just by um, visualizing this data here. So I'm going to go to the data editor here, and here we have a list of users. And these users have an email address, okay, and they have locations, they have titles, okay. Um, and right now, everybody can see each other's information, okay. All of these rows are available to these users. Now, we can do some tricks on the front end of Glide to use filtering and visibility conditions to hide this information. For example, if I were to come over here from this list of users, I could come over here to the options. Sorry, I could come over here to the inline list options, and I could filter this list where email is the signed in user. Right? So right now I am viewing as Joe Hampton. So now Joe Hampton is the only one that's being visible in this app. So on the front end, it looks like I'm being a little bit more secure, right? And I'm filtering the data by whoever should see the data. And you'd be correct in saying that on the front end, this is more secure. However, on the back end, all of these rows of data are still being downloaded to Joe Hampton's device. She may not be able to see them, but they're still there. And if Joe Hampton were savvy enough to inspect that data, she'd be able to see all of this information using some third party tool, which obviously is not secure. So to make your information more secure, you have two features available to you. You have row owners and you have roles. I'll talk a little bit about each. Row owners, 99% of the time, okay, are going to be put on an email column. If you're not using roles, it's always going to be on an email column. And this effectively does the same thing as filtering where email is signed in user. The difference is, is um, so let me show you, if I were to come over here, the difference is that the data will not be downloaded to the device. Only the row owner, in this case, Joe, right? Only her row of information would be downloaded to the device. So if she were to inspect the data, she wouldn't see anything else. So to enable row owners, you would just come over here to your email column, okay? And you'd make it a row owner. Note, you can only make uh, columns that live in your Google Sheet row owners. So if I were to come over here to a computed column, like a relation, you see I can't make those row owners. I can't make relations, I can't make if then else's, I can't make template columns row owners. It has to live in the Google Sheet or in the Glide table if you're starting from a Glide table. So here, if I make this email a row owner, we see that all this information has been grayed out except for Joe Hampton's information. Hers is still bold because that's who I'm viewing. And this is just a visualization that if I am Joe signed into the app, I'm only gonna see my row of information. So it's one less thing you have to do, right? You don't have to filter inline lists by the, where the email is assigned a user. You can just enable row owners. And you see if I come back here to the app, it has the same effect. Now, um, because we are preventing users from seeing each other's information, just know that enabling row owners is very unforgiving. You're not, uh, so if you want a, some sort of community app where you want Joe seeing Ryan's information, or at least his name and photo maybe, right? You can't have row owners or you can't use an inline list with the row owners applied to it because Joe will never see Ryan's information. So what you would have to do instead is create a second sheet in your, uh, your Google Sheet or another Glide table 
that imports the information that you want to be made public and use that as your collaboration or communication or community uh, portion of your app. Right? There are a variety of ways to do that for a later video. Um, you would use an array formula, you could use a unique formula, you could use a query formula, you could use a variety of formulas in your Google Sheet to make that happen. Um, but you wouldn't be able to do it from within this specific sheet if you have row owners applied. Okay, so again, it's very unforgiving, but very secure. All right, so that's row owners in a nutshell. Um, now, what happens if you want to have a group of users be able to see each other's information? So not just your email, I'll remove row owners here, but let's say you wanted to have all of the event managers be able to communicate and collaborate with one another. So when I'm signed in to the app as either Joe, Janet, or Derek, I should be able to see the information related to my team, right? Uh, we are all event managers, and so we all belong to the same team, and I wanna be able to communicate with them and see the, each other's information. In that case, you wouldn't use row owners on an email column. You would have to use the roles column, or sorry, the roles um, feature for private pro apps. And the role feature can be applied to any string, really any column that exists in your Google Sheet. Most often, it's applied to your literal role, whether you're an admin, non-admin. Um, it could be applied to a department, right? So if I belong to the communications department, all of us in, who work in communications can talk and see each other's information, right? Um, but if you are, or if you have an app where you have more than one business housed in the app, or you have more than one location housed in the app, you can use that business name or location as the role. So in that case, role is kind of a misnomer. Really, it's more like private group <laughs> in that case, right? Privatized group. Um, and this is most often the request that I get from my clients is they'll say, hey, I have um, a sheet of you know 300 rows and 20 different businesses and I want only those businesses to see each to see their own information I want to keep you know the prying eyes out of other businesses so what you could do is you could apply the role security feature on the business name and the business becomes the role let me show you how to do that so first thing is that you have to have a private pro app you can tell if you have a private pro because if you go to billing you can see that you have a private pro app right here. Uh, private pro apps give you 20 free users or 20 included users as part of that price. And any user above and beyond the 20 users is $2 per user per month. And if you have a zillion users, obviously that could get really expensive. Um, but if you talk to Glide, they'll work with you on getting some discounts based on your user set. Okay, so that being said, once you have a private pro app installed, okay, you're gonna come over here to privacy and you can limit by access by email, let's say, um, and then you have to set up your user profile sheet. So to do that, you're gonna come over here to your layout view, click the menu icon, and then click over here in the user profile section. And you see on the right hand side, you can set the source for your user profile sheet. And if you have a private pro app, it's gonna unlock this role dropdown. And here's where you're gonna select the category of the uh, Google Sheet column that you want to group that privacy by. So let's say I wanted to um, have all of my locations be private, right? So if I'm working in this office, we're only gonna see each other's information. And if I'm working in that office, they get to see each other's information, but the two locations will never see each other's information. Uh, again, this is a good example of having two different businesses never seeing each other's information, right? So I can set the role here to the location, okay? Now, this does absolutely nothing <laughs> until you set the location 
to be a row owner. So this comes back to the row owner. So let's show you how to do that. So I set the location to be the role. So now Glide knows that I can group things by location. I come back here to my data editor, right? I'm gonna remove the row owner from email and watch what happens when I apply row owners to the column that I designated as the role. See that? So you see that um, right now I'm viewing as Joe Hampton. Joe Hampton is in the Alcott Road location. That location column is what I set as the role. And you see that this row, this row, this row, this row, and this row are bolded. And all of the other information is grayed out. And this is a visualization that all of the grayed out information, all of that data will never hit a device that is um, that's signed in by one of these users that's in bold, right? So if I'm signed in as faux Lambert, all of this grayed out information will never hit my device. I can't inspect it, I can't see it. And you can see that um, because we grouped by location, we have our role by location, if I and Marie, Sarah, Fo, Christina, or Joe, we can see each other's information in the app. We can see each other's phone numbers, we can see other's emails and photos and all of that fun stuff, right? If I were to come back over here to our layout view, let me see that those are the five users that I can see. If I preview as a different user, for example, Alan, who is part of the corner office, right, we see Alan sees a completely different set of users. And that's because his role is the corner office. And so if I'm signed in as one of these four users, that's only the information that I'll see, okay? So that's a way to kind of distinguish between row owners um, when you're not in a private pro app, right? If you're just in a public pro app, row owners is applied to typically an email column where you're only ever gonna see your own information. And if you have a private pro app, you can use roles to group your privacy. So that way you can see just a select groups information that's downloaded to the app. So hopefully this is a little bit um, helpful for you in determining which route you should take, whether you should go row owners or roles, private pro or public pro, and the limitations and the benefits of having each. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at robert.petito at woodward.edu. And as always, thanks for watching.